Right, so now we're down to the exciting collage section. And this time, I must declare, I have been influenced greatly by a video that I just watched by Marta. And um, she was using, or using up, paper pads that she had. This one is from Prima and it's called Watercolour Floral. And it's one of my very favouritest, favouritest um, paper pads. I love it. I've bought it several times. Um, but anyway, what I'm looking for is a large focal um, point, you know, a, a largish one. I'll explain why soon. And some fairly self-coloured pieces. So, yeah, that's self-coloured. That's... Oh, just look at it. It's beautiful. Um... That's fairly self-coloured. Might find a better bit than that somewhere. I've got that already. Yeah, pink, that's perfect. Perfectly perfect. And that's a bit darker pink, so I'll leave that out as well. Um, I've got all my remnants in here. And the backs, like this, the backs of the design sheets are all fairly self-coloured. Did I lay in any blue yet? No, I'll lay that out then. Oh, little project. What's this about then? Don't know. Don't know why it's still languishing in the paper pad. I obviously didn't like it. It's just a little bare bones project. <laughs> oh, very nice. They could turn that way, it would look better. Anyway, that's that. It's got nothing whatsoever to do with today. I've just discovered it. Um, oh, on the back of here, we've got some real sort of inkwell colours. Mm. that's nice that's very nice let's tear that out I do like that, it's lovely um, that might be all our colours actually more remnants here what have we got on the reverse side oh a beigey colour Insert three. No idea what I was trying to make here. Yeah, I'm going to leave that beige colour out. And black insert. Back insert. Who knows what this was going to be? Not me. It must be many a moon since I was last looking at this. Back of this is cream, that cream colour. Uh, then we've got blue yeah okay so I think I've probably got them all but let's have a quick flick through the the other pad just in case I've missed anything really groovy one never knows I'll put it that way and you'll see both sides well that green we've definitely got these are lovely journal cards aren't they um, oh pink it's a nice big bit of pink isn't it Lay that out. What we got here? Blue, pink, pink, blue. Oh, it's, it's such oh, it's such pretty paper. This beyond pretty. That's the inkwell one. Then the blue one. Look at that sheet of florals. My goodness me, it's divine. Light blue, beige. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so we've got out what we need to get out. I'll just lay those over there. 
Right, so my focal point came from a sheet of this, but I don't have one left to show you. So I'll just show you what the focal points are, or were, should I say, on that sheet. Um, whoops, I'm dropping my butterflies. Yeah, so came out of this sheet. This is what it looked like. So that sort of went... Yeah, like that. That's right. Uh, and then this one was up here somewhere on the edge. And then there's a couple of little butterflies. I thought there was three actually, but I don't know. I've lost one somewhere. Um, these tiny little butterflies that I quite like. And that's it. That's all I've cut out. So now, I could have fussy cut this, but my will to fussy cut had completely deserted me by then um but isn't that beautiful as a focal point isn't that gorgeous so now what i want to do is cut out some squares and rectangles uh, what's on the back of this pink i may as well try and get them out of here because this page is completely wrecked up anyway isn't it so let's get them out of here and I'm kind of aiming for about two inches I think Judy that's probably half an inch to you <laughs> um, oh. I think I'm gonna have to chop it chop it down I can't get that get a grip Two inches. Let's do that. I don't particularly want that writing on it. So I'll go back into this piece. Two inches. And then I'm just going to cut off, make them squares. I'm not saying every last bit's going to be a square. In fact, this one I'm going to leave as a rectangle. So that's two and three quarters. Leave them there. Um, I can't pick anything up. Right, what can I get out of this? Probably enough. I would have thought. Let's just square that up, that edge. And I'm throwing these remnants in the, in the, in the bin because there's a limit to how many remnants anybody can keep. This, this side is wonky. So let's straighten that up. Bring it over another quarter of an inch. There we go. Right, I don't want that bit with the writing on particularly. Okay, so now we're ready to cut our shapes. Have you noticed my new chopping board, my new baseboard? Fancy, isn't it? Not that I don't like my medium art, but it was very reflective. I think that's probably enough pink. But I've got this bit that's not going to get used for anything else, so I'll just cut it up. So that's the pink done. Um, now I've got this beigey colour. Oh, I don't need that pink anymore, so that can go back over there. This beigey colour. Are you straight up there? Are you heck? That's all right. We can soon straighten you. And are you straight up there once again? No. Right, so let's just take two inches off that. And another two inches. Lovely. 
lovely that can go over there cut these down into squares I might not really use these but I might so let's have them two and three quarters and whatever that measures I don't I don't even know what does it measure three and the same here two two and three quarters and then whatever whatever remnant we've got lovely right this brings us on to this very dark inkwell sort of color so it's a full sheet so i'm gonna to have to get this out take off the strip at the bottom the branding strip except it's got no branding whatsoever because it's prima and they're excellent that way and then I'm just going to take a two inch strip off it this might be a bit dark for our collage but we won't know until we've got all the pieces and I'm just going to take two inch two inch pieces of it maybe some longer ones maybe one at three another one at three and then whatever I've got left there we go so that's our beige our pink our dark blue um, then I've got this gorgeous light blue I don't want these words though so where am I gonna go um, let's cut off along there and let, let's cut a couple of two inches off See where that gets us to. Lay that to one side, lay the branding strip to one side because it's really nice. And I'm just going to get rid of these two little whispers anything else i need to cut up yeah this pink oh i've got pink already don't need that then i uh, don't need that because i've got pink already and this green so i'll cut a two inch or, or a couple of two inch strips out of that thing with prima is i think you get four of each design so you've got enough um left to make into a mixed media piece or a collage or whatever you like you can use one kind of as it was intended or even two and you've still got a couple of them to uh, mess around with i love Prima. they just make the best paper pads apart from timmy of course but they're very different right so let's cut this up into strips squares two and a half three I'm just going to cut that off just above the writing wherever that is two and three quarters there we are, so that's those ones, these ones, so I'm just, I'm literally doing this by eye. <coughs> so 
so I've no idea um, what they measure, but they'd be near enough. Green, right, now they're like blue. So I'm just going to take that right in off the end and then keep pushing it through. Varying shapes. Whoops, so easy. There we go. That's our blue. Some of it's very light blue, but it is blue. And same with this. I don't want the right any bit on the end. There we go. So that's our pieces cut out. Now I've done no kind of prototype or anything for this so I really don't know what the story is going to be. But as you know this is our collage book and we've been using uh, one side for each collage but today because my focal point is ginormous I, I need to be using two two pages. That's not going to fit on there. <laughs> no way, no shape. So that's going to go on there and I've still got this bit. If I want to use it or cut it down and use it, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is I've got this book that is exactly the same. Cover's different but it's exactly the same. And I'm going to take out the middle page and I'm going to build on that. So this is now full A4 size. The book's A5 and once I take this out the middle and open it up I've got A4 so I'm going to build on that and then I'm going to stick it in there. I am going to trim around the edges just a little bit um, just to give me a bit of room when I'm sticking it down etc. So I might as well do that now I don't know while I remember. So I'm just going to take off about half an inch on two sides. Make sure you get the opening side. <laughs> yeah, otherwise you'll end up with two pieces of paper, which is not what we want. There we go. So it's it's a bit shorter now and less tall than A4. So there we go. Right, that's that. So, first thing I need to do is put my background in. So bear with me while I go and get that. Right, okay, I've selected my books. I've got um, an old novel, Jane Austen, Mansfield Park. I can't possibly be anything ready with that, uh, wrong with that. But they are slightly different, different colours. And then this old dictionary. It's also, once again, slightly different colours. So I'm just going to tear a page out of each. I think a page will be sufficient. Pop them over there. I'm not doing this by where the centre is or anything. I'm just opening the book and take, tearing a page. That's all I'm doing. This one I can probably use the front page, I think. There we go. Right. So I just I've already allowed for a border because when it, we chopped some off, so when it goes in the book, it's going to be, um, you know, not fill the whole book. So I can go right up to the edge with this. Um, but I think I'd prefer it without the border on it without the margin. So let's take that off. Oh, we've got two sheets here. Oh well, never mind. And a bit off the bottom. There we go. Yeah, like I say, I've got two sheets. Oh well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So 
so that's that. Uh, this little Mansfield Park one. Just different colours. They're all they're all that beigey beige, but they're different colours. So they'll give us a slightly different look in the back. That just was not straight. Sometimes difficult cutting very thin papers, isn't it? They um all the guillotines and choppers and everything get on better with thicker papers. So talking of thin papers, this is dictionary paper, so you know how thin this is. Let's just try and get that straight to start with. Okay, lovely, great job. So, I quite like that up there, so let's just tear that and that can go down there. And what have we got? We've got this one. Oh, two off. Um, Where do I need to bring this to? To about here. It doesn't matter what sort of job you you make of it when you when you're tearing them. It'll be near enough. Really will. That's fine. Then I need probably a strip of this. And some edges are straight, some aren't, doesn't matter. Uh, it can even be upside down if you fancy it. If you fancy it upside down, put it upside down. And that can go there. Then it's a good job I've got two of these, isn't it? Um, I want that on top because it's different and that on top there and I can have a little bit on its side across the bottom there and I think we're probably going to be all right at that because 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 our central motif is going to be covering that. I could just add a little bit to it but you know I really think we're going to be fine. Put that there, yeah tear that that way and put that there. So we are all but covered. It's a tiny little bit there and if you're worried about it just stick something in it. So I'm going to go off and stick all of those down and I'll be back when I've got my back done. I'm not inking anything, I'm just sticking. Okay, so they're all stuck down. I've just literally placed that on there. It's not stuck or anything, uh, just to see where we want to go from here. So I've got all my uh, rectangles up here. Let's bring them in so you can see them. The beigey ones. Oh, come on. Right, so I'll just make a start with these blue. See where that gets us to. This is just a kind of trial. See what happens. I do like those blue ones. They set, set it off really nicely, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah, that looks so pretty. Let's go for the pink. Pink next. Oh, 
come on, just go under there. That's it. Probably do with leaving that a little bit longer like that, I think. Um, maybe one of these green ones. Coming out of there, maybe, I don't know, just trying. Just trying for size. There's only another green one over here now. To kind of balance it up a bit. It's coming to life. I need three green. If I've got two, I need three. So let's put this one down here. About there. Okay, we're doing all right. Doing all right. So what else have I got? Light blue and beige. Um, let's try the light blue. So let's try the beige. So I've got an obvious gap here. I stuck my papers down very well. So let's pop that there. And this one. Maybe down here. And one more in this corner. Just there. So I think that looks really nice. I don't know what's going on with the lighting today. It's not very good. Um, right, well, we've had a bit of a jiggle. We've changed the mat over from the pink to the purple, and it does seem to light that better. It's It, it sort of compensates for itself if the background's too light. Um, but I, th I think you can see that more clearly. My hands look a bit better. Don't look like I'm a dead person. <laughs> but the thing that strikes me now is I've got these two pinks top and bottom and it looks like I've only got two pinks in the whole thing so I want to split these up a bit um, maybe put that one over there and maybe that one up there because it was in a straight line with its friend down at the bottom and that there yeah, that's better. Need one more pink. Um, which I'm not sure where to put it. Maybe get rid of that beige and put a pink there. Under you go. What's your problem? Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, I like that. That's that's looking nice. Now I'm going to disrupt all of that. Try and remember where things are. Although I know I haven't got a chance of remembering. Uh, and I'm gonna. The reason I didn't want the writing on it before is I want to put my own on, my own sort of pattern. So I'm going to do a bit of embossing and I'm going to emboss in white and in black. So the light ones are going to get black on them. I've laid out a couple of stamps. I don't know. Um, this one because I, I like this section in it. Um, this one's just flowers and leaves and such. And this one, I like this section here. So I'm going to start with that one. It's uh, an All in Create uh, by Tracy Evans. It's called Fully Fledged. 
So let's just take this stump out, which looks like it's never been used before. Lovely. Oh my goodness, these sticky strips on these will drive me to drink one day. <laughs> I don't think so, but never mind. I might as well leave it open because... Okay, so will that fit on my stamp platform? Enough of it will. But a lot of you have been asking about this little stamp block that I've got and where to get it, etc. And it's impossible to get. Mr. F's trolled the internet. And he's come up with this. Look at this, it's a little Miss P. My cardigan on and my purple hair, my glasses. And it's a, a stamping block. Perfect. So, yeah, I mean, it's all flush on the bottom. It's lovely. So I'm just gonna take that pick that up and I'm gonna start with what should we start with let's start with the dark blue ones I think the likelihood of me getting that back together is like zippo so I'm just gonna take the pieces out that I need I'm gonna to try to anyway come on Right, so I'm going to stamp on those and then I'm going to emboss with fine white. It's wow and it's white super fine, which is what I wanted. So, can I get two done at one time? That'd be excellent if I could. No, well I could if I used my hand for that bit. So. Um, where's my embossing pad here? So give this a good ink up. It doesn't matter if this is a perfect stamp or not. It's probably better if it's not, to be honest, but it'll be what it'll be. So let's just stamp on those two. Press that down. Then this is the first time I've used Miss P. Ooh, she's very stable. And I'm not using a stump platform underneath it either. Uh, you know, a sponge, I mean to say. So, mm. let's see. Let's see what's happened, if that's worked at all. It is a brand new stump. Everything's against me, to be honest here. Get my tweezers. There's another pair of tweezers that are better than those ones. Oh, it's very fine. Let's do this one. I think that might be all right when it's embossed. <coughs> I'll pop them to one side and we'll emboss it and have a look. It does say white, so hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, hopefully it'll be okay. Which is the other bit I embossed, that bit there. I can hardly see it, to be honest. And then I've got these two pieces here. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. And don't leave your stamp with embossing fluid on it. It won't appreciate it. And you probably wreck it, so don't do it. Could do with a larger, larger stump block than this, but I wanted to use Miss P. Right, there we go. So 
see what happens this time. Okay, I'm going to emboss those and see how they've turned out. I haven't tried this before. I normally do a kind of prototype of anything that I uh, record, but on this occasion, no. So it's either going to work or it's not. So for this, I've got my uh, heat embossing tool out because it just goes a bit quicker, doesn't it? I'm just warming it up. This is drying clear. It's not white at all. It's a bit of a disaster, isn't it? It's it's clear. So I'm going to throw. I mean, it says white super fine. It isn't, so I'm going to throw it in the bin because I'll just pick it up another time. So I need some more dark blue. But before we move on to that, let's get some other bits done. Um, these ones, I think I want to do in black. That should stand out and I've got Ranger Black surely that is black Ranger Black super fine so surely that's black and I'll go and have a look and see if I can find some more some more white fancy that it's not even white it's no good is it Not what I was expecting, to be honest. So let's just pop those there, stamp on those. And maybe my em embossing pad is. What am I doing here? I don't know what I'm doing with that, no idea. I think I just picked it up by mistake. Yeah, maybe my embossing pad is quite dry. We'll see how we get on with the black and if it doesn't work, then I'm changing my embossing pad. To be honest, it doesn't look great. Let's try that. Oh no, it does look nice though. Yeah, that looks nice. So it's not my pad, not the stamp. Oh, that hasn't come out though. That hasn't come out at all. So let's quickly stamp that again. And I think I will change my embossing pad because I can't be doing with this not working first time it's not good yeah that's perfect right so I want to just Heat those up, set the black. I'm going to put this away first though.
Right. Right, well, now I've done these, I'm not so sure I like them. They're not the pretty that I had in my head. So, let's just try them, but I really don't think they're what I had in mind. Pretty certain of it, in fact. Yeah, no. I don't like so I'm not going to do any embossing at all and spat the dummy out I'm going to do um, I'm going to get some have I got any more dark blue than that no but I need some pink because I've just done three mock-ups on my pink so I'll get three more of those out and I just need to get some more dark blue, I think. Yeah. Okay, so just give me a minute. I'm going to cut some more dark blue. Um, yeah, one second. Right, okay, so I've got all of my colours cut out again. Uh, I'm not going to emboss any of them. I could stamp on some but I think no I think I'm afraid of that so I'm just going to go off now and stick all these down in the background I'll see you in a sec so finally it feels like I've got those all stuck down in place um, and put the focal point on and see what we think oh I think that looks gorgeous I love it I did want some pattern in there and so I suggest if you're doing something very similar to mine that you you stamp on them possibly just a little bit of, of detail on some of them it looks slightly bland so in order to change that up a bit I'm going to use some gesso on these background pieces uh, and I've got new gesso yes I've got De La Roni uh, gesso, gesso primer and we'll see what it's like Ooh. I'm just going to put a bit down I'm just going to attempt to put a bit down whoa not that much I don't need that much let's get rid of some of that might take the lid off in future actually Oh, I just need a, a palette knife. Scoop some of this back in. It's too expensive to waste. There we go. Mr. Ref, riding to my aid. Thanks, my dear. You're welcome. So let's <coughs> let's 
Let's use the bit up off this palette knife first. So I'm going to load my brush very lightly, very, very lightly. Actually, I'll just, I'll just clean. So I'm going to go dry brushing is the idea. So pick up some paint, then brush most of it off. And I'm just going to come down onto these. I need a bit more than that, though. Just, yeah. So you can still see it's pink, but it has got this nice bit of texture on it. So it's just easy, does it? Some bits are perhaps a little thicker than I wanted. Some bits a little thinner, but that's okay. By the time we get it all done, it'll be fine. Finding I need rather more than I thought on my brush. Oh, it looks gorgeous over that dark blue. Gorgeous. So just... I don't even know what you'd call it. Consolidating. That's a good word, isn't it? Let's use that word. We are consolidating our background. Just bringing it all together. Oh, I hope you can't hear my tummy. I'm starving. <laughs> And the smells coming out of the kitchen are so nice. We've got roast lamb today. Oh yeah, with cabbage and carrots. Um, what else? Cauliflower. We have cauliflower mash instead of potatoes because it's much less carbs, obviously. So for those of you in of a diabetic persuasion, mashed cauliflower is very nice. There we go, nearly to the end of that section. Oh, that's nice, the dry brushing on, that's lovely. There we are. Now I want to do the book pages and I want to be a bit more heavy-handed with them. And I could do with putting it on something, couldn't I? Let's put it on there. So I'm just going to be that little bit more heavy-handed with this. Don't want to obliterate it. Um, just make a, a point of difference. Because it's all a bit bold and in your face at the moment. And what we're using is very, very pastel colours. But even if I was using strong colours, I'd still do this. So I'm not painting it all out. It's a kind of wet dry brush, I suppose, is what it is. It just makes the whole thing look more together. Whoa, that's a lot there. That is a lot. Let's see if I can wipe a little bit of that off. There we go. And you might feel some of your backing papers trying to bubble up a bit. Don't worry about that. They'll soon calm down. 
that's us back to the beginning again. So, just going to see if there's any bits I want some more on. Because I've got a little bit of gesso here, so I'm just going to use that up. Maybe along there. Okay, I think I think that's fine. So I'm just going to go and rinse my brush out because I don't bring any water in with me. Oh, it looks nice when I see it like that. Yeah, that's nice. So there we go. That's dry now. It doesn't take long to dry, to be honest. It's just a very thin layer. And I've looked out my two uh, Stabilo All pencils. I've got blue and I've got black and they are what they call aquarelle in as much as you can put them down and then pull them out so I think I'll use the blue it's a little bit less harsh before I do let's just place that on there and see what it looks like oh it looks gorgeous doesn't it looks really nice but I am going to go around these bits here um, and just see see what it looks like. So I'm just going to go right up to underneath that and up this side along here and you can add extra bits in if you want to make it a bit thicker. Whoops, there goes my nice fine point. You don't have to be too neat about it down the side it's just going to bring some hopefully in my head but we've known how things in my head turn out today not always for the best um, but it's just going to add some definition to this hopefully so back over here So I'm just drawing around them. And if you haven't got any aquarelle crayons or pencils, should I say, then just use, you can use a fine liner, you can use anything. You've gessoed on it, so you'll get away with using anything at all on it. But I'm just going around these, the shapes that I have. And then I'll drag the colour out and we'll see what we've got. And if this doesn't work out, it's going in the bin and you'll never know it even existed. <laughs> but I think it's probably going to be all right. You've got to take a risk somewhere, haven't you? Yeah, I've taken plenty enough today. So there we go, that's us about done, I think. Right, so even like that, it looks much better when you put that on it. It brings it more to life, I think. Excellent. So I'm now going to get my water brush. Oh. And just start dragging these out a little bit. Ooh, that's very blue. That is very blue. But that's okay. It's probably nicer for being blue for this particular thing. Because uh, there's a lot of blue in the papers. And black, I think, I'm pretty sure, would have just been too dominant. So let's just drag them out a little bit. You 
you could you could if you want to call this a drop shadow it's kind of what it is just emphasizing around the shapes really is all it is Those Stabilo all pencils are absolutely brilliant. I love them for this sort of thing. There's nothing better. And they are, the black is so black. Such a good black. And if you get too much, just wipe the water off and just go away to nothing like that or your finger whatever there we go Getting there. Getting there. I feel like this needs some pink. That's what I'm feeling. I need some pink. So, I might have a bit of an idea for that. I might. Is that all done? I think so. That looks nice. Put our focal point on. Yeah, I think that looks so much better. So much better. But like I say, I feel like I'm lacking pink. So I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds for that um, Stabilo oil to dry. And then I'm going to come back with some pink. See in a sec. Right, so for my pink, I'm going to use something that I never usually use. Uh, and I'm going to use these pastels, soft chalk pastels. And it's by Faber Castell, which will be no shock to you because I'm a real lover of their stuff. Uh, and these, if you want to get into pastels, this is the way to do it. These are very inexpensive for the quality that you get. And look at all the colours. There's loads. And some are missing. Some have been naughty and haven't put back and yeah but look at them all so after a pink a quite a soft pink if there is one um i need a scrap of paper let's just use the paper out of here uh that looks like it might be a bit on the jolly holly side what about that one It's quite a nice pink, isn't it? Uh, what else? Well, there's that, but that might be a bit bright. Yeah. No, I think the first one I had in my hand is probably better. So let's use that. So let's just go around and put some bits of bits of this pink in various places. Just put it where you want it, and then just smudge it out. And it will smudge because of the um, gesso. So not much. Don't need masses. Just a hint. A hint of pink. That looks nice. Ooh, it looks nice. And we're really pressing this into the to the background. You know, if, if you weren't, you'd have to fix it with something. Hairspray fixes it. But this isn't going to need fixing because it's just, it's really pushed in there. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. 
you'll find it moves differently where you've got gesso to where you haven't got gesso that's fine let it just let it do its thing wow this was a good idea as opposed to some I've had today which didn't work out quite so well but this is working out all right looks nice so there's plenty of room for some in here you see where there's no gesso on the paper it, it holds on to it and where there is gesso you can get it to smudge out but I like that I do actually like that so I'm just kind of going on the underneath parts the bits that would be underneath so it's casting in my mind it's pinky sort of shadow um, where else can I go Oh, it's lovely when it all blends out like that. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I might as well go all the way around. <laughs> I made a good start, so I might as well carry on. Um, along here. So for those of you that have got pastels in the cupboard and you've never brought them out, don't know what to do with them, this is one way that you really can use your pastels and it always works. It's always a delight actually. Let's put our focal point back on and see what we think. Oh, it's coming to life. It's absolutely coming to life now. I like that. I like that a lot. And to be honest, I think that's about it. I don't think we need to do any more. I'm tempted to keep going, but I don't know. The only thing that it needs is stamping on here, but then I'd have to gesso it again and everything. So, yeah, for future reference, stamp on your little bits if you're doing something like this. That's all I can think of. That's about it. So I'm going to stick my focal point on. And call it done I think I've got my little butterflies and they're part of the prompt so I need to put them on should have put um, sticky double-sided sticky sheet on the back of this before I fussy cut it because it's a bit on the intricate side to be gluing and quite large and it is going to get glued over two pieces you know when it goes in the book it's going to have to fold in the middle so I don't know maybe should have cut it for I don't know I don't know oh blimey come on then we'll have a look where the butterflies are going to go Okay, I think we're done. Right, so let's get this on. Goes about there and about there. A bit more of an angle, like that, I think. That's great. Lovely. That's lovely. Oh, we need a title as well. We need some words. That's also in the prompt. I didn't show you the prompts at the beginning, did I? Silly me. I'll show you them now, though. One in a minute. Right, so my butterflies are... 
<coughs> excuse me, these three little ones that came off this fussy cut sheet. That's all I've got. So that's all I'm going to use. I'm just going to fussy cut those out and I'll get the prompts as well. OK, so here finally are the prompts for this week. I haven't stuck my butterflies on yet. I'll do that in a sec. Uh, week 13, unlucky for some. I just asked Mr F what he thought of this and he said, well, it's not as bad as you thought it might be. <laughs> so there you go. Here is my collage. It's not as bad as you thought it might be. It could be better. But as Mr F says, everything could be better. So, you know, I'll I'll take heart from that. It it definitely could be better. And what, you know, what I would say is stamp on these. Even if you don't heat emboss them, just stamp on them quite lightly. Uh, you know, even at this stage, I'm thinking I really, I'm itching to stamp on them. And the other thing I, I really want to have a go at is putting pink under that seat. But if it wrecks it, it's too late to recover from. So I'll leave it as is. So the prompts are squares or rectangles, which we've definitely covered. Book page. Yeah, there's plenty in the background there. Uh, butterfly. I've used three, which I'm just going to stick down. And flowers. Well, this is a very floral uh, fussy cut, uh, actually. Uh, Fussy cut isn't on here, uh, neither is the size of the focal point. I've just used those in a way that, you know, this is how I've interpreted it. So I'm just going to stick my butterflies on and call it done. And like I say, there are loads of things that I can, loads of ways I can see that you could improve that. But it is what it is. So I'm just bringing these outside of the squares just to, because I think it looks better, basically. And I've got three. There was three on that page that are fussy cut. So, notice that fussy cut isn't on the prompt, so you don't have to have a fussy cut if you don't want one. Right, well, the only thing that I think it needs now, I've just thought of this this second, is it needs to be dark around the edge. So I leave that there. I'll go and fathom out how I'm going to darken around the edge. Right, I've decided to go with hickory smoke because it's not as dark as black and I don't want, I don't want that dark. So I'm just really just going to go roughly around the edge. Just darken it up. Bring the, bring your eye into the centre. And of course, as we all know, the ink takes differently to the gesso as it does to the book pages that don't have any gesso on. So you will get a natural variation, which is fine. Well, th this collage seemingly the easiest has given me more grief than any of them but i'm beginning to really like the yeah i think that's better it's just darkened it up a bit um i'm beginning to like it so now we've got the problem of putting it in the page yeah this one oh it looks nice with a border doesn't it <laughs> so I probably need to bend it somewhere, won't I? About half. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. Stick that side down and then stick that side. Or one, one then the other, I think. I'll get my collar out get the glue for the job. And then put this to bed. OK, 
okey cokey right let's get that right in the crease because we want it to fold don't want it to tear just give that a good push down lovely don't think it's exactly straight but was anybody expected it to be straight today there we go on the side getting quite chunky now I'm going to do something really easy for the collage next week I really am but I thought this one was going to be easy you know I spotted that bench in the Prima papers as I say I was in, um, inspired totally by Martha so I found the bench and thought this will be easy peasy yeah, what did I know? Oh well. So make sure that's right up into that crease. I'm just going to fold that down. Ooh, look at the good chunkiness in there. That's lovely. So let's have a look. Yeah, I think that's nicely stuck. So yeah, there we have it. It will open up all the way, I think. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's better. Uh, got some glue down here. Bring in the dark ink off with it. Why wouldn't it? Eh? Why would it not? My, my rubber's getting a bit. There we go. They're excellent things, these glue rubbers, and they are so inexpensive. But they can save your bacon sometimes. Like in a situation like that. So there we have it, guys and gals. I have done my best for you. I hope you like it. It's very pretty. Very pretty. And there's the the prompt. And I'll thank Ju Judy in advance, whose birthday it is today. Uh, well, Saturday. You'll be watching this on Sunday. So I just want to wish her again and I hope she had a really, really lovely day. hope she was waited on hand and foot. Uh, and the Pussycats bought something for her birthday. And yeah, that's all I've got to say. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, so a quick heads up. The prompt for next week is Invisible Ink. Yeah, totally invisible. Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> Bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> So there we are. Thanks so much for joining me. It's been quite a stressful entire premiere, this one. Um, but I hope you found some bits useful and I hope that you just won't... Don't unsubscribe. It can only get better from here. Isn't that pretty, though? So thanks very much, guys. Bye. See, see you soon. Take care now. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Yeah, just trying to work out which way this goes. You've seen me do this collage and I just wanted to show you one thing that I've done to it since then. I've actually gone round the fussy cut with a black pencil just to pop it out a little bit. And I think it works. I've gone round the butterflies as well. I've left these alone. I like those the way they are. Um, but just so you could actually see that focal point because it was a bit lost. So that's what I've done with that. I just wanted to show you. And the other thing I haven't done, but hey, I haven't done it, is put a, a sentiment or a title or whatever on there. But I probably will do that as well. And I'll show you next week. Brilliant. That's that. Right. Moving swiftly and seamlessly along. 
uh, I've got this little project for you. It's something that I never, ever do. Never. <laughs> so uh, it's a change. It's a change up for me. I'm sure virtually everybody that watches this will know how to do this. But I have... Um, I've decided that we have an awful lot of new starters, new beginners. So this is a really nice project for them. So I've got a piece of white, fairly thickish card, uh, and my stencil, which is my roses. It is a, I don't know, it's just called Dusty Attic. I don't even know where this came from, but it's one of my favourites anyway. So I'm literally going to put that down on there and it just kind of fits pretty perfectly. If you absolutely are a new starter, then you might want to put a bit of tape down onto it, just across the corner. I don't think I've got any tape to hand, but you know what I mean, just tape it down and then it'll stop it moving. And I'm going for shaded lilac. I know. So I mean, I'm using one of these brushes that I got from Timu. They're really, really good. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, and I'm just, I'm just going to put my stencil in. These brushes work really well with stencils because the hairs bend. And so it gets in everywhere, right to the edges. Because sometimes those domed daubers that we have, they don't get right up to the edges of the stencil. And then it doesn't look so good. So and there we go. That's that side done. And I'm now going to swing it round and make sure that it hasn't moved. And if it has, just put it back where it belongs. And off we go. So the whole page is going to be covered in this absolutely beautiful stencil, which I love. And you'll see all its beauty just now. There we go. Isn't that pretty? This shaded lilac is a very, very bluey purple, um, but I like it a lot. I mean, if somebody told me that was blue, I'd think, yeah, I wouldn't think, oh, you're lying to me. <laughs> Um, so now I just want to go round the outside of that with the shaded lilac. So let's see what I've got. That looks okay to me, that one. So I'm just going to go round the edge. Just to make it stand out a little bit. You don't have to do this part. If you if you like a cleaner look, don't put the edge in. I just like the edge. This is a really unusual project for me. For one thing, it's pretty. And for another thing, it's card. It's a card. <laughs> Neither of which um, you might say I'm known for. I don't think I'm known for anything, to be honest with you. But, you know, you know what I mean? So that's done. Let's pop that to one side for the time being and bring out the front piece. I just need to wipe my hands if I had a, which I have. I don't, I don't want to. I've got to remember with this project to keep it super clean. It's white card. So let's just, this is my large messy mat that I've got out. Not because I'm going to make a large mess, hopefully, um, but it's just going to cover my nice new board up. So here's my little card and I'm going to stamp on it. And I've got this set of stamps. Do not even think about asking me where they came from. I haven't got a clue. Mr. F came up with them from somewhere. They look like an alley special to me, but I guess originally there were somebody's stamp. I've no idea. So using my Miss P <laughs> little stamp block. Let's just make sure I haven't got any ink on that. Oh my goodness me. This is me being super careful. So I'm just going to use this one first. And I'm using Versa Claire, Versa Claire in Medieval Blue. 
because as I say to you that's got a lot of blue in it so let's just uh, ink this up and do remember that card has two sides to it so if you muck up badly there's always another side to go at so I'm going to put that fairly central and fairly near the top uh, if you've got a nice all-in-one flower die or whatever use it I just couldn't find one so I'm building my own up here um, which other one do I like this one looks like the same sort of flower but on its side oh don't do that so maybe down here yeah that's looking nice and then I've got this little one that I'm not sure if it's if it's dying or <laughs> what's going on with it might be a bud I'll go with that it's a bud there we go and I'll put it in the middle now I can't see it but I'm going to put one there yes lovely and I'm going to put another one maybe up here kind of like that yeah that's fine that, I could have done with that turned around slightly more, but it, it is what it is. Uh, and now I need some leaf, some leafage type stuff. Not that one. Maybe, maybe this one. And I'm just using the same colour ink. Just going to come from the centre out like that. lovely 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 and I've got this little one here I'm not sure where I'm going to put that yet I'll have a look and see no I don't know I do not know um, I've got a bit of purple waste card here so I could put that up there like that yeah that's fine um, oh, I've still managed to get ink on this goodness gracious me I am a mucky pup is that enough? Do I need any more? Um, do I need any more is the question. Yes, and the answer is, I don't know. Maybe that one again. Just down the bottom here, like that. Yeah, that's okay. I quite like that. It's not a bad composition. I've seen better, but I've seen plenty worse. So let's put the lid back on that because it's lethal, or I'm lethal with it, I should say. Right, so let's just dry that off a little bit because Versafine does take a couple of seconds to dry. There we go. I'm not surprised I've got ink on it. Look at my fingers. Dear me. That's from pulling the stamps off off the uh, block, putting them back on. Right, so now I just want to colour these. Um, and I'm going to use the shaded lilac. Again, so it'll go with that. I'm just going to dab it down onto my messy mat get my water brush 
you can add a little bit of water if you want if it's going to make it go a bit smoother but probably don't need it and just go from the inside out we're doing this really quite not not perfect if you know what I mean just adding a bit of colour hither and thither so anyone absolutely anyone can do this but what I would say to you is get yourself a good water brush that's the secret of everything well good paper and a good water brush and then you'll you'll be fine so I've got bits that are darker bits that are lighter and that's fine and I'm just going to come back over these that will have now dried add a little bit more colour to them because it always fades when it dries any watercolour paint does goes much paler when it's dry so I'm not even going to the edge of the petals I'm just putting, dropping some colour in there and then this one literally I'm dropping colour in it and I think that's probably fine let's clean my brush off of that purple mop that up make sure my brush is clean yep it is and then I'm going to go in with some green and I'm going to use my old favourite shabby shutters so you could use watercolours if you've got watercolours you could use um, pens anything you want I, I just want a quick application of colour so I'm just using my ink pads because they're right beside me here where I craft. So just dropping a little bit in. I'm coming over the edges and you know what? I'm not even fussed. <laughs> How cavalier. So I'm going back in just to add a bit of depth to those. And to these ones here. There. Now if you wanted to join them all up, you could easily, very easily, add, I'm just going to leave that there because that might, could do with another, uh, another coat of paint. Um, you could just get a fine liner. I just got, Mr. F bought me a new pack of fine liners the other day. I do not know where he put them, so I can't add anything. Um, he's looking for them. I, I think they are on there, yeah, lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, look what he bought me, this gorgeous pack of Micron. Micron fine liners. They are undoubtedly my favourites. So, I think I'm just going to have to break the cellophane. They're all different widths. Different width nibs, should I say. So, and, and there's a brush tip amongst them, which I've never had before. I want a fairly thick one for this, so I'm going to go with, um, yeah, with the thickest, this one, one millimetre. So let's just have a little practice on the other side, see what it looks like. Yeah, it's still fine, it's still very fine. So I'm going to bring this stem up and down to there. And this one. Just down to there. So it just kind of all all hangs together then, doesn't it? It's not like things are floating in midair. This one can join on to that one. Um, I think that's okay. Happy with that. Happy with that. 
Oh, I love my new microns, they're beautiful. So yeah, we've got a composition now, proper composition. And I'm just going to go back into those leaves, splotch just a little bit more green, like that. There we are, so now I can clean this up, wash my pen out. Yeah, with regards to water brushes and good water brushes, I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but this is a Faber-Castell. They come in three thicknesses, fine, medium and broad. And this is a fine one and I absolutely love it. I mean, I really, really love it. And I've had a lot of water brushes in my life. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is, yeah, probably edge that. So I'm going to edge it in the shaded lilac again. Put my little dauber away a bit prematurely there. So just around the edge. Once again, you don't have to do this. Another thing that you could do at this stage is stitch around it if you wanted to. That would look nice. Uh, or even faux stitch around it. You know, just make some squiggly lines. That would look nice too. So there we go. Now I think I can put that away. So here's my thing. I've cut out this piece of card just slightly taller than that and slightly wider as you can see. And I'm just going to stick this on there now easy sticky job whoops let's just get that off there too much glue so just a very quick project that you could use in a gazillion different ways you're really good. So let's just take our time and get this where we want it. Like there, I would say, is where I want it. Lovely. Little bit of glue there where I don't want it. So while it's wet, you can do this when it's dry, but it takes loads longer. So it's easier to do it while it's wet. There we go. Right, yes, I think that's okay. And then I'm going to put the topper on. Look at me, topper, you'd think I knew what I was doing. Uh, just, just there, fairly centrally. I'm sure somewhere I must have stamps that say happy birthday and stuff. I'm sure I do. I might go, just go and look, look for one. Right, so I want this fairly centrally on my card. So about, about there, yeah, I think about there. So I'm leaving a border around it, a little border of the purple like that there we have it Hoo -hoo. yeah you see if I put a like a legend or whatever you call them on there I can cover over my um, my little faux pas right I'm gonna go and look for a uh, something it says hello or something for there and wash my hands so I'll see you in a sec Right, so I forgot actually yesterday, I would have used these had I remembered about them. While Mr F was out and about, he called into the charity shop as he do and he brought this home, which is really nice stamp set. It's got warmest wishes, bloom where you planted, what's a buttercup, fresh as a daisy, hello sunshine, happy days, spring has sprung, thinking of you and congratulations. Then there's a host of 
flowers and leaves along there and then at the top look there's a little pony a bee a ladybird a chick chick I don't know what that is a duckling possibly a little butterfly a bunny rabbit a lamb I love that lamb and a butterfly so I'm going to just have a look what size these this is a 30 piece stamp set by Rare Earth now I don't know craftstoreuk.com I don't think they still exist it came as part of a you know magazine but I have some other <coughs> rare excuse me rare earth stamps uh, and i really like those so yeah it's just one that's the right size that's all that i want uh hello sunshine i want one that's not massive warmest wishes is just too big bloom where you are planted what's up buttercup what's wrong with that let's do what's up buttercup these are brand new. Nobody's ever stumped with them. Um, come here, Miss P. Come here. And that's it. And I'm going to stamp it onto this piece of waste white card. I'm learning. I'm absolutely learning. And I'm going to use this same ink that I used to stamp the flowers and leaves. What's up, Buttercup? <laughs> so let's put that. I think that's relatively straight. <laughs> we'll soon find out, won't we? Perfect. My goodness me. And it's taken all the ink off there. Beautiful print. Beautiful. Of course, Miss P could have something to do with it. Thanks, Miss P. Where did it come from? There, bottom corner. Okay, that's that. Let's put that back in there. Just in case things start dropping off. You know how it is when you get old. <laughs> things drop off. <coughs> I think my voice has dropped off. I know, Mr. F, things dropping off on you. That's no good, is it? Right, let's... Let's cut this out. And I'd really like to get it square and even, if I could. That would just be... That would be superb. Yeah, I think we're all right there. And... Need a little bit of a bigger margin there. I think that's okay. I think it is. Um, and then I need some purple to go behind it. This has got some off stamping on it, so I want to avoid that if I can. So let's just make a mark. I think that's the easiest way. So mark about there. Mark about there. Okay. This is a job for the small Timmy trimmer. before I chuck anything away let's just see if it's the right size oh would you look at that my goodness what's going on with the world and can I get that down there it's a bit big isn't it it's a bit big it's a bit big but it's going on it because it's all I've got to offer <laughs> um, so let's stick this pit down first I'm quite sure I would have had more suitable ones, but that came to hand, so that's what we're using. And it does cover my ink splotch up very nicely. 
Yeah, it's it's definitely too big, but just overlook that and just think about the. Um, I probably want to go around there, you know. I've gone around all the other pieces, so I think I need to go around there. And a bit of glue. You can use double sided anything you like. Doesn't matter what glue you use as long as it sticks. See a lot of card makers use double sided. Not that I watch too many card making videos I can tell you. There we go. What's up Buttercup? So I have already, look at this, just checking, just checking, my card cut two size and that's going to go on there. What do you reckon? So I'm going to stick it on and I will send this to somebody through the week. I'm sorry it's got, it's still got ink sm smudges on it but all in all it's quite pretty. All I wanted to do was show you that you can make the quickest of cards in next to no time, really next to no time and send them out and I'm sure most people would be pleased to, to receive this. So leave your border around as symmetrical as you can get it. There we go. So there we have it. A Miss P card. Ha! Who ever thought they'd see the day? Well, I think that's quite pretty. And I hope you do too. So really, really simple. We stenciled a piece of card. We stamped and you can hardly call that painted. We put some ink on the flowers and the leaves. And then we put a sentiment on it. The sentiment is too big but hey de ho that's just the basic so you can take it away somebody says to you oh it's so and so's birthday tomorrow within 10 minutes probably 15 at tops you can have this card made just like you knew it was the birthday all along. <laughs> so I'll bid you adieu at this point and the collage have I already done the collage? Yes so this is goodbye. <laughs> so I'll see you through the week more than likely. And I will definitely see you next weekend. So have a good week. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.